नमस्कार इन टूडेज क्लास आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द फर्स्ट फॉर्म ऑफ पोइट्री दैट इज लिरिक लिरिक इज अ शॉर्ट एंड हाईली म्यूजिकल पोएम दैट कन्वेज पर्सनल इमोशंस और फीलिंग्स टिपिकली स्पोकन इन द फर्स्ट पर्सन आफ्टर दिस क्लास यू विल बी एबल टू डिफाइन द लिरिक डिस्कस इट्स करेक्टरिस्टिक्स explain its structure and describe the importance of music in the lyric in the words of m h abrams a lyric is any fairly short poem consisting of the utterance by a single speaker who expresses a state of mind or a process of perception thought and feeling In ancient Greece Greek song was divided into two classes first is melic or lyric song which expressed the sentiments of a single poet to the accompaniment of a u shaped stringed instrument called a lyre whereas choric song was intended for collective singing to the accompaniment of instrumental music with a band of dancers in ancient times music provided by the instrument like lyre formed an external accompaniment to a lyric however it was made musical by the voice of the singer keeping tune with the sound of the instrument the elizabethan poets discovered the rhythmic possibilities of the word themselves unassisted by music their lyrics are unrivaled for their word music or verbal melody the words are arranged so artistically that these produce the music of their own without the help of musical instruments here is a stanza from alfred tennyson which has been universally praised for its word music o hark o hear how thin and clear and thinner clearer farther going o sweet and far from cliff and scar the horns of elfland faintly blowing in these lines there is sufficient music in the words themselves the lyric has become independent of the lyre or any musical instrument the words have their own music There are four characteristics of the lyric. The lyric is comparative short poem. It gives expression to a single emotion or feelings. It appeals more to heart than to the intellect or to be more precise, it appeals to the intellect through the heart. The lyric is a subjective poem as it expresses the poet's personal emotions. The lyric can be divided into three distinct parts that correspond to the three moods through which the poet passes when he is inspired by some emotion. The first part which generally consists of the first stanza states the emotion. It is the motive which has set the poet's imagination working. The second part consists of the thoughts suggested by the emotion. by this time it is well advanced in intensity the third part that is final part is as short as the first part marks the poet's return to his initial mood this part gives a judgment or pointed summary all these three parts may be noted in robert herrick's to blossoms fair pleasures of a fruitful tree why do ye fall so fast your date is not so fast but you may stay yet here a while to blush and gently smile and go at last what were ye born to be an hour or half's delight 
एंड सो टू बी गुड नाइट इट वॉज पिटी नेचर ब्रॉट ये फोर्थ मेयरली टू शो योर वर्थ एंड लॉस्ड यू क्वाइट बट यू आर लवली लीव्स वेयर वी मे रीड हाउ सून थिंग्स हैव देयर एंड दो नेवर सो ब्रेव एंड आफ्टर दे हैव शोन देयर प्राइड लाइक यू अ वाइल दे ग्लाइड इन टू द ग्रेव द फर्स्ट टू लाइन्स स्टेट द थीम सेडनेस एट द शॉर्ट लाइफ ऑफ द फ्लावर्स ऑन अ फ्रूट ट्री द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द पोएम एम्बॉडीज द थाट्स अराइजिंग बाई द इमोशन द फ्लावर्स आर फॉलोइंग दो दे स्टिल लुक फ्रेश एंड माइट हैव स्टेट टू डिलाइट अस अ लिटिल लॉन्गर it was their whole destiny to live for only a few hours and then to vanish and it seems said that nature takes them away forever so in the last stanza the poet concludes that all earthly beauty is short lived like the blossoms it only shines for a moment sappho p b shelley William Wordsworth, Robert Frost and Robert Burns are some famous lyric poets. Here are some references for further reading. So this is all about today's class. Thank you.